But God made them a promise. You know what that promise was? That he was going to send somebody that could rescue them. And like one of my previous meetings, same word. What they needed is somebody that could pay off their debt, could redeem them. Hope I do this right. I'm trying to talk and do this all the same time. That they, they would be able to find a redeemer. Jesus promised he would send one. And lo, in fact, in the old prophets, there was a number of prophecies about this redeemer that was going to come into this world. And he was also called a savior or a messiah. And so they were anticipating this, that they would, there would be a way for them to get to be changed. And they, God had promised them a redeemer and all the people that heard the promise, what they were doing, they were looking forward to uh, a knight in shining armor or something like that that would come into the world and he would deliver Israel from the hand of the Romans and do things like that. And uh, so that's kind of the way it was. They were looking for that kind of redeemer. However, God's plan was totally different. Now, when, when it says God gave his only begotten son, it means that God was the father. God fathered that child. And what they were looking for is something totally different than what we think about today. You see, that one that came to be the redeemer, that came to be the redeemer, that one is Jesus. And he didn't come riding on a white horse. He just came into the world and was born in a stable, laid in a manger, with his mother and stepdad and they were there to love and worship that child and it was a glorious time and I can't begin to draw this like I would like to but nevertheless it was a glorious time oh by the way I forgot to tell you in that previous picture with Adam and Eve they were there to face their future but you see when God saw them he didn't want them to live in shame and so what he did, he made clothes for them, aprons some call them, but nonetheless, they were no longer naked now because God made them to be covered up. See, God is so efficient in what he does. Everything he does is right. We may not agree with it, but it's always right. I think they were so ashamed and so disappointed in their own actions. Well, this is the cause for the Lord Jesus coming into this world. That tiny one born, just a baby, it was a glorious thing and just a young couple out there with their baby and yet outside of town there were some shepherds out there that had a bunch of sheep and they were looking out for their sheep i don't know how many shepherds there were but apparently several of them and as they were out there all of a sudden something wonderful began to happen up in the sky there was an angel that started telling them about the messiah being born in the town of bethlehem and telling what all he was going to do, that he was the Messiah. And then the heavenly hosts all over the place began to sing and glorify God. And these shepherds were so excited that the angel told them where they'd find him. So they went to town and guess what they found? They found that baby, that baby Jesus. And they told Mary and Joseph the story about what was gonna happen with Jesus. And it was a glorious, glorious night, a glorious, glorious occasion, the Redeemer had arrived and that redeemer lived a perfect sinless life that sounds good don't it the name of the redeemer and you all know this but just for my word i got to put this up here he had a name jesus the christ which is really jesus the redeemer jesus the messiah that's who it was and in spite of all the wonderful miracles he did, of all the good things that he did, in spite of all of that, the people decided what they wanted to do is to kill him. You see, the Bible says that we've all sinned. It also says the wages of sin is death. So you see, in order Jesus to, for him to redeem us, he had to pay the debt. That debt was death. And so Jesus, God's son, this is so hard to believe, Jesus, God's son, the king of the universe, the creator of the universe, laid down his life for people like you and me. The promised redeemer arrived, and yet they killed their promised redeemer. 
But originally, remember, with Adam and Eve, the wages of sin is what? Death. And so Jesus, in order to pay their debt, had to give his life on that cross. You see, death was the answer to that. And Jesus took upon himself that death you and I deserve. He don't. He never sinned. But he did it because he loves us and is not willing that anybody would miss heaven. He wants us all to come there. And he's got that in mind for us. And he offers that way for us if we will just surrender to him and give him our life. The only reason Jesus would do that is because of his great love for you and I. I am so glad to tell you that. Jesus loves us so much that he shed his blood, allowed them, and of course we say that, but it was a lot more than that. They beat him, they pulled his beard, terrible things they did to Jesus. They made fun of him and he came to the Jews and that's just showing how awful they thought of the Jews. But Jesus, God's son, gave his life on that cross. But I told in another message, I told about what happened, how that they had taken Jesus and buried him in a tomb, put a big rock in front of it. But Jesus, because of his great power, had the ability after he'd been dead three days, on the third day, whichever way you want to call it, Jesus rose again. The stone was rolled away and Jesus came to life. And in all of that, Jesus did he, he didn't do any miracles as far as I know at that time, but people could touch him. Well, I guess he did do a miracle. He caused him to catch all those fish. And so Jesus did all of those things so they could know it. Somebody said, well, I don't believe it, but he did. They, he, they did have to believe it because Jesus showed him his hands, showed him his side where they'd stuck the spear in him. They, he did all those things for them to show that he was alive. You know, ghosts can't eat. They can't do things like that, but Jesus wasn't a ghost. He was alive, flesh and blood. And they can argue it any way you want to, but the truth is, Jesus went to that cross and he showed us what he has in mind for us. Jesus had told them earlier that he was coming again and that he was going to prepare a place for them. Going to his Father and going to prepare a place for us. And you and I would call that heaven or we could actually call it kind of like that, couldn't we? A paradise. No sickness, no sin, no crime, no nothing. Just a beautiful place to live. And Jesus went to prepare a place for us. And that's when he took his friends out of town. And while he is there, they watched as Jesus did what he said he was going to do. They'd never seen anything like it. But while they were watching, Jesus simply ascended up to heaven with the promise he's coming back to take us with him you see all of us Adam gave up his eternal life didn't he there when he did that sin he did that and all of us still face all of us are going to have to deal with this we don't even like to talk about it don't even like to think about it We all have to face an eternity. I don't know about you, but I heard enough about that to know that I don't want to go to the option to heaven. You see, God has prepared a place for us. Jesus has got there, got that place for us and planning to come back and take us again. And for those that have wanted to live forever by doing what the Bible says, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, believing on that one that came as a baby and yet ended up dying on a cross. We must believe on him because God made a place for the devil too, you know. This is the one nobody wants to talk about. In fact, we hear people say, well, they always want to talk about hell is fire and brimstone. Well, guess what? It's a real place. God didn't make it for humans. God made it for Satan and his batch. But if you're not saved, you lay this body down Guess where you go? We don't even want to talk about that, do we? That's beyond our imagination. We can't even imagine what it must be like to be in that place, a lake of fire, sulfur that burns forever and forever. That's eternity. So the big question is how to live forever. Guess what? 
God desired something like that for us, but because of their unfaithfulness, ended up with a place like this. And we still have weeds and thorns and thistles and people killing one another just to... Have you noticed how much worse it's getting here lately? Seemed like we've turned away from God and we've adapted into all sorts of other things and beliefs. But God knew that and that's why he provided that Redeemer for us that gave his life, paid the price. He paid the penalty for their sin because remember, their sin brought death. When Jesus went to the cross, he suffered that death and he rose again with the promise that if we would let him have our lives, let him become the Lord of our lives, he would take us to be with him someday. And if you don't go be with Jesus, there will be only one place left. Guess who makes the decision? You do. And that's a serious decision. I know people that are virtually on their deathbed and can't bring themselves to believe that Jesus is Lord. And my heart aches for them because we know where they end up. At the same time, we know of a number of people that were on their deathbed and they realized that death was around the door and they made themselves commit their lives to Christ. They asked him to forgive him. They asked him and told him that they believed that he really was the savior, that he had come into the world to seek and to save the lost. That was Jesus' whole mission, is to help us to know how to live forever. And it isn't because like, we do a lot of good stuff. It isn't because we give a lot of money or go to church a lot. It is simply, we need to be, it's called being born again. You see, Adam was born in the flesh up here. He had flesh and blood. But when he got put out of the garden, something was taken away from him. He no longer had access to the tree of life. But that's what Jesus is. Remember, Jesus even said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So what we call it is being born again. When you do that, you receive Christ into your heart. It's like a whole new life begins in you. It's the new life that Adam lost here. We get to have that eternal life simply by turning from our sinful ways, asking Jesus to be the Lord of our lives and surrendering to him. His Holy Spirit can come into us, help us to live for him. And yes, we'll probably lay down these carcasses of ours, but one day, one day they'll rise again, go to heaven. That's our blessed hope. And it's because of God. He loves you that much. It's beyond my imagination. I've got a son and there's no way I'd let him take somebody else's punishment because I'm being an all red blooded American. If they did it, they deserve it. So I couldn't let him take somebody else's punishment. But because of God's great love for you and I, he sent Jesus. And I've often thought Jesus probably could have called down a few thousand angels and rescued him off that cross. He didn't. Because he knew if he didn't go through the death on the cross, the resurrection and the ascension, nobody would have hope of everlasting life. But because of that everlasting life, we have a hope that one day we'll be with him throughout eternity. You can have that same hope. But you must believe Jesus is God's son, that he lived a perfect life, that he died on the cross for you, that his blood, his shed blood paid for your sins. Then he ascended into heaven with the promise he's coming back. And the only way you know whether you're coming back or not is by surrendering to him. And we trust you'll do that. If you do that, please let us know. Uh, just send an email or something, let us know. And, and uh, again, the Boone Open Bible Church in Boone, Iowa, would be glad to hear from you. And we pray you'll do that. And thank you for your time. See you another time.